let's investigate the expectation and variance of discrete random variables. Here's an example of a probability distribution of a discrete random variable x. A discrete probability distribution is a listing of all possible values of the random variable x and their probabilities of occurring. Capital X represents the random variable x, and lowercase x represents values the random variable x can take on. Here, this particular random variable takes on the values 0, 1, and 2, and those values have these probabilities of occurring. We might want to know some characteristics of the distribution of x, such as its mean and variance. The expected value or expectation of a random variable is the theoretical mean of the random variable. It is not based on sample data, it is the theoretical mean of a distribution. The notation for the expected value of a random variable x is e of x. It's simply the mean of the random variable, or equivalently, the mean of the random variable's probability distribution. And we also represent the mean with the Greek letter mu. In some ways, it's a bit unfortunate that we use the terms expected value and expectation, as they might be a bit misleading. The expectation is a mean. It does not mean the most likely value, and in fact, a lot of the time the expected value is not even a possible value of the random variable. It is simply the theoretical mean of the random variable. How we calculate the expected value differs between discrete and continuous random variables. For the rest of this video, I'll be working with the expected value of discrete random variables. Some adjustments will need to be made when we discuss continuous random variables. To calculate the expected value of a discrete random variable x, we use this formula. We multiply each possible value of x by its probability of occurring, and add that up over all x. This means that the expected value of a random variable x is a weighted average of the values of x. We weight them by their probabilities of occurring. We can also calculate the expectation of a function of x using a similar approach. Here, g of x represents a function of x. For example, g of x might be x cubed, or the square root of x. To calculate the expectation of a function g of x, we multiply the value of that function by the probability that value occurs, and add that up over all possible values of x. Here again, that's a weighted average of the values of the function, weighted by their probability of occurring. We'll use that notion to calculate the variance of x. We often use sigma squared to represent the variance of a random variable. The variance of a random variable x is defined to be the expectation of x minus mu squared. This can be thought of as the expectation of the squared distance of x from its mean, and that's a measure of how much variability there is in x. And to calculate that for a discrete random variable, we use this formula. We take x minus mu squared, multiply it by its probability of occurring, and add that up over all x. Conceptually, that's what the variance is, but it turns out there is a very useful relationship that can often help to make the calculations a little bit easier in practice. Mathematically, it can be shown that the expectation of x minus mu squared is equal to the expectation of the square of x minus the square of the expectation of x. Since the expected value of x and mu are the same thing, we could also write this as the expectation of the square of x minus mu squared. This relationship comes in very handy in some calculations, and it's also very useful in some mathematical proofs and derivations. It's not obvious just by looking at it why this relationship holds. It's not too tough to show mathematically, but I'll save that for another time. Let's calculate these quantities for an example. Suppose you bought a novelty coin that has a probability of 0.6 of coming up heads when flipped. Let x represent the number of heads when this coin is tossed twice. Here's the probability distribution of x. It's the same one I showed at the start of this video. If you don't know where this comes from, I worked this out in my Introduction to Discrete Random Variables video. Suppose we want to calculate the expectation of the random variable x. In other words, how many heads will we get on average? 
it doesn't make sense to take the ordinary average of 0, 1, and 2, since that wouldn't be fair to the values that have a greater probability of occurring. If the values were all equally likely, then the expectation formula simplifies to the ordinary average of these three values. But here, 0, 1, and 2 are not equally likely, and we need to use the expectation formula. Here's the formula for the expectation of x. And I'm also going to plot the probability distribution with the three values of x on the x-axis and their probabilities of occurring on the y-axis. To calculate the expectation, we multiply each value by its probability of occurring and add up all those terms. Here, that's 0 times 0.16 plus 1 times 0.48 plus 2 times 0.36. And if we carry out those calculations, that works out to 1.2. So the expected value of the random variable x is 1.2. On average, x will equal 1.2. Let's see where that expected value falls on the plot of the distribution. Here's the probability distribution of x. The expected value of the random variable x is 1.2, which falls right here on this distribution. If 0, 1, and 2 were all equally likely, then the expected value would be 1. But here, 2 is a little more likely than 0, which moves the expectation a little bit higher. Now I'm going to carry out a quick simulation to illustrate a point. I'm going to simulate 1 million values from this distribution. 1 million values where the probability of getting a 0 is 0.16, the probability of getting a 1 is 0.48, and the probability of getting a 2 is 0.36. Here's a relative frequency histogram of 1 million simulated values. The observed proportions of zeros, ones, and twos are very close to the probabilities, as we'd expect after simulating a million values. And if we calculate the average of those million simulated values, we get 1.199869, which is very close to the expected value of 1.2. The law of large numbers tells us that if we were to sample more and more values from this distribution, their average would converge to the expected value as the number of observations increases. Here we can see that after a million observations, it's getting pretty darn close. Now let's work out the expectation of a function of x. Suppose we wish to find the expectation of the square of x. To find that, we square each x value, multiply that by its probability of occurring, and add that up over all x. Here, that's 0 squared times 0.16 plus 1 squared times 0.48 plus 2 squared times 0.36. And if we carry out those calculations, we'd see that that's equal to 1.92. On average, the square of x will equal 1.92. Now let's work out the variance of x. The variance of x is defined to be the expectation of x minus mu squared. Let's take a quick look at a plot to get a feel for what that means. Here's the probability distribution of the random variable x. And I'm drawing in a line at 1.2 representing the expected value of x, which is just mu. The variance is the expectation of the squared distance from the mean. Visually, the variance is a weighted average of the square of the distances represented by these three white arrows. Let's calculate it. Here's the probability distribution again, and the expectation of x minus mu squared is the sum, over all x, of x minus mu squared times p of x. And we've previously calculated mu to be 1.2. So this expectation is... 0 minus 1.2 squared times its probability of occurring plus 1 minus 1.2 squared times its probability of occurring plus 2 minus 1.2 squared times its probability of occurring. And if we carry out those calculations, that works out to 0 0.48. So sigma squared the variance of the random variable x is 0 0.48. And if we want the standard deviation of the random variable x, which we'll represent by sigma, that would simply be the square root of that, the square root of 0 0.48.
Here's the probability distribution and a recap of the three expectations we just calculated. Let's verify this relationship. The expectation of the square of x is 1.92. And if we subtract the square of the expectation, we subtract 1.2 squared, we get 0 0.48, which is indeed the expectation of x minus mu squared that we just found. So this relationship holds here. Of course it does, since it's true in general. This term is the definition of the variance. The variance of a random variable x is defined to be the expectation of x minus its mean squared. And this expression is a little more intuitive when we're trying to explain what the variance actually means. But it's usually easier to carry out the calculations this way. We've often already calculated the expectation of x, so we just need to calculate the expectation of the square of x. And the expectation of the square of x is usually a little easier to calculate than the expectation of x minus mu squared. And that's a brief introduction to expectation and variance of discrete random variables.